Hey, so since we uh not recording yet, uh is anybody else like an a big brother or big sibling? Or y'all yeah. like the youngins? Mm -hmm. Okay. Of course so, you are, Sharpie. So when you when you the oldest, it. you know, you gotta be prepared to fight because of stuff that your little brothers do and they come, you know, they bring you into it. Of course. That's that's how Crunk is. He is he is going to have all of us in a fight over this quadruple because he refuses <laughs> to let anybody tell him he cannot call it that. I don't care how many times Sharpie Charlie says words have meaning, and I don't care how many times everybody gets on Facebook. He broke and said it though. They get he on, broke and said it though. Uh, people he be did on, say it. Uh, oh, hey, Charlie did say it. You he didn't break and say it. He didn't break and say it. He like, said it. It was not from my word. He said it in a like, mock like, like, way. Quadruple. He said it but in a he did say way. It. Hey, he now, but you acknowledge it. That's how. That's how it goes. Oh yeah, no people they hate it so much, and that and, it, and it's just like you have no idea how much you are feeding me. You probably had like mm. what fifteen people come at you today for that, and I'm like, good bro, Lord. it was so funny. You had people it come in today, Staffy, bro. Yeah. It was Staffy. Staffy, he, he retweeted it, and he was just like, uh, and then naturally you had some of the people be like, stupid American, and he had to be like, yo, chill. Nah, he actually knows about ball. It's just I'm giving him a hard time about this, and yeah, I wouldn't back off of Staffy. I was like, no, bro, it's four in a row. It's, plus, it's never been done before. We can call it whatever you want. I get what the other thing is called, the quadruple, but sucks to suck. I don't know. You guys want it, and then you call it what you want to. I got to catch like, up. I was like, see, he going to have us out here fighting in these street, these Twitter streets. No, that's why I'm posting on my personal, though. That's why I'm 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 having the conversations on my personal. So it's not I'm, – I'm not lumping people in. It's people, they're adding me. Human Resources sent an email to Kronk, told him to start sending it to his personal account. So don't don't tag and me. I I am human HR. resources. HR. I'm email to HR. I am yeah. HR. I'm emailing myself. <laughs> We're gonna have to ask you to stop. Yeah. Opens up other email accounts. Oh damn! All right, cool. Well, okay. our social media policy. Personal opinions must be from Phoenix. Okay. So did you hear from it? Was this during the Arsenal Chelsea game? Because I was ghost during that time. I didn't get a chance to see any of that. No, it was just like a good morning video. It was just like a good morning video, even though we're like down and out. We're still on the way to win a quadruple and everyone's hating it. Uh, just enjoy things. Life is good. Vibes. I love it. <laughs> and I just and see your like, video now. That was like nine hours ago. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll go with this later. Wow, Krunk. It's take it's it's taken some time, but I'm finally learning how to shit house. Like I just had a proper I'm just embrace I, I know how to do it. I just have to embrace it. Even though what it's crazy to think what I have been doing now isn't actually like shit housing. So it's just like I'm unlocking levels. It's just, it's just, we're going. It's exciting. All right. Tom up, I, I, it, it hey. sounds like I, I came in during the only shades uh, portion of the show. Is that is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> this is the vibes for the episode today. This is it is funny because I hit record and the first thing Tarek says, uh, since we haven't recorded yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even other. see it. So I like, wait, the, the I didn't even see of it. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> Greatest he said that head down in, in, in show history because it's just like, yeah, this is not cool. Let's talk about this thing. And it's like, all right, this red button going. We four minutes. I wouldn't have even said it, it literally after recording right before you started talking. Uh, you just oh, hit the I, I don't care. I was like, "Oh, just let me let me get this out before we go on, so I could just uh, give him." We brief. on, we lit. Oh this yeah, I didn't know we were Chicago. We good. Hey. This is Chicago no, hangover right, right here. Yes, yeah, right. Sh Sharpie established. He was like, "No," and it looks like he's officially getting Tarek. You know, Tarek's kind of getting a little vocal about it. He's, he's he separated himself from the quadruple. I and it, I just been Charlie from the beginning. I, I was hoping. <laughs> No, I was I was hoping Chicago <laughs> would yeah. bring us together, and nope, nope. It's just like you're on your own. In fact, you've we've strengthened ourselves in our personas, and you know, even though we've we our chemistry, our teamwork has grown. Uh, I'm still out here alone with my takes. It is what it is. I, I, you know, it it beats like that sometimes. Quadruple baby. We make an art over here. Hey, the most is when you the wonderful. I hate it.
have permission to make a mistake. You have permission to lose. You have permission. And that's when we get big. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a genius. Attack everyone and send everyone. I think we're forgetting the most important thing. We're forgetting about focusing just on ourselves. But we can do better. We need to take the next step and there's no better place than taking the next step here. Show ourselves out there how much we want to win it again. We win four of the last five Premier League guys. Four of the last five Premier League. Are we going to do it again? Don't ask me again about doubles, triples, quadruples, fifth-tuples, sixth-tuples, and seventh-tuples, so... Don't do it. Hey, hey, and welcome to episode 98 of Shea Blue. The biggest my numero, not the three, not the two, I'm at you and all. Oh, man. Um, yeah, about that. I'm going to really have to figure this out. Cause I, I don't think we can use the shako. I mean, it, the, the the words are factual. Like you know, we are the three or the two, we are the you know. But it's like it coming from him, you know, it just doesn't doesn't hit the same. So, uh, hmm. yeah. And I'm sorry, Lando. You just gotta like sit there. You can't even like step up for him anymore. We had a nice good chat about that in Chicago. Uh, we had a lot, nice lot, little chats in Chicago about a lot of things, and we're going to get to it in a little bit and more. Uh, this episode, vibes, we relive in, we're recanting, we're rejoicing. Uh, for all you who are listening, we were in Chicago last weekend. In a couple weeks, we'll be in Kansas City. And in a few more weeks after that, we'll be in Washington, D.C. And then, in general, for the Man City U.S. Tour will be at most of the matches. Sorry, Florida. But we'll be at those matches. It's plenty of chances to be able to connect and build to more stories that will be on future episodes. But we are the most comprehensive show about Manchester City, covering both the men and women's games, spanning both sides of the Mason-Dixon line. We make an art over here, capitalized A. I am with my show bros. I'm Crow Chocolate. I said that already, so I'll cut that out. I'm right, talking about Sharpie Charlie, Tarek, and Lando. How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? It's so good to see you again. Right? It's like I just saw y'all like two days ago. It's a little weird now that it's digital. I mean, though. it is a little bit weird. That, that not gonna lie, it's a little bit weird. <laughs> Nobody has legs anymore. Um, and it's like, <laughs> like here's the thing, people. If you haven't met anybody from Shades of Blue in person, my word. We got a couple of giants. We got the Twin Towers. We got Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns out here with Tom and Crump. All right? Just this sheer giant humans. All right? And so once you see them in person, you're like, whoa, you are very imposing. I am kind of afraid. But they're very kind people. Not nearly <laughs> as, like, mean as they look. Like, you would be very scared of these large black men. But no, they're kind-hearted. So I'm happy that... Big teddy, teddy bears. bears, just softies, but so wonderful. Oh Love my god! I mean, you're not yeah, like top. short yourself, right? And then I was just gonna say, I was, I was definitely shocked that Tom Bomb said, "I, I don't know, I don't know why I didn't think that you were like tall, tall." But yeah, no, you motherfucker, you're, sky, you're skyscraping. You need to maybe adjust your camera lens or something so it's like true to height or something. I don't know. So I don't listen, know. listen. Oh, go ahead, Charlie. I was going to say, to Tarek's point, like, I'm tall, but I'm like normal tall. Once you get like six feet, you're just like, okay, I'm slightly above average, right? No, these motherfuckers are very tall. Like, that's the difference. It just It's a skyscraper. You're like Victor Women Yama, and I'm just like the normal Kevin Durant. Like, oh, tall. No, no, no. You're not. Like the different sky, y'all some skyscrapers right here. So I do just have to throw this out there real quick. Um, even though Crunk and I are very, very tall individuals, and like numerically we might be taller, no one is taller than and Andre Carlisle of Diaspora United. 
Uh, but, uh, but, so I just want to, you know, keep that, uh, make make sure that that's known. Uh, he is the original original yes, footy I, skyscraper. I, I, uh, and uh, We are not going after his no, title at yeah, all. No. Respect. He, he Respect. will always be the tallest. Mm-hmm. Don't want that smoke at all. <laughs> the term footy skyscraper is pretty dope, though. Got to have that for any van that we see out there on tour, anywhere that we go preseason. See who gets a uh, uh, nomination for footy skyscraper out there. Because <laughs> apparently, six, what are you, are you crunk 6'4"? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Tyrese Maxey out yeah, here. Yeah, I... It's... <laughs> To Crunk's point, like I'm, I'm about six two. Um, it's rare that I meet someone and I look up at them. And so when I first met Crunk and I was looking up at him, I was like, "Oh my god, this dude is huge!" Like I did not, I did, it didn't, it never clicked to me that like he would just be that tall. <laughs> like I, I, I just figured that he was like averagely tall. Let's stay on this point because Crunk gets a direct and shit. We're going to talk about Crunk sites some more. So. We've seen Crunk in videos, right? Like, I remember, like, he was out of the lake. He's dancing. He's having a good time. Big vibes. He's in the gym when he's back at the school. He's shooting hoops, playing footy. Like, I've seen Crunk's full body. But until you meet the man in person, it's literally the way people talk about Victor Wimayama. Until you see him in person, you don't understand what you're getting into. And as someone who is sitting down <laughs> for all of our interactions, it's just like, whoa. I need you to sit back down in person. Like, stop standing beside me, bro. Like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you just all standing around yeah, me right much. now. I don't you like doing? looking up to people. I, I work with children for a reason. I don't like looking up to adults. So <laughs> that's how I live my life. I'm very highest. Um, like, yeah, like off take me, a man. couple steps back. I want to <laughs> look at you without raising my neck up. Don't do that. I ain't Cat Williams. Don't treat me like that. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh. Before we get into anything at all, anything else at all, what I need you to do right now is if you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up, show us some love, leave a comment on what you thought on the episode. Uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Good Pods, any of those podcast streaming services that allows you to rate and review, please do that. Uh, say a nice word, even if it's just like good pod. Appreciate that. And five stars, you know, always helps boost the show, puts us in front of other football fanatics, lovers of the game. And <clears throat> amazing shows for you this week. Uh, we already did one. Shout out to Sony M coming on, talking about Brighton. Uh, then uh, tomorrow, we will be having Jacob from Mist Rolling In Podcast. That is a Nottingham Forest podcast. We will be talking about the game on the weekend. Uh, Thursday night lit stream. It's always a good time. Uh, I think people are still feeling the malaise. So uh, it's going to be a good time. I haven't heard from them. So, you know, yes, potentially pending. Hon- honestly, the also convenient show, we, he wasn't able to... Get on last week. Shout out to our other guests, Phil, Jake. Good spending time with them, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but we'll be getting Kavincho back on. He had to handle some business, and he's all situated now. Shout out to him. Free my boy. Free Kavincho. Also, shout out to Jake, who uh, he was like, is this Shay's a Blue podcast, or is this a pickup uh, basketball team that just walked in the door? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, and Lando's yes, our was, point. Who said yeah. that? Uh, Jake said it. Uh, How should we feel about that? I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, he's not, not, he's not entirely <laughs> wrong. Like, well, you, for most parks you go to, six fours in the post. So you know, he's, hey, and I am. I'm a post player. I'm in there. I'm banging. I'm getting wrote offensive I'm rebounds three, all day, baby. Big time three and D. Young Kawhi, Big, over here. Young Kawhi. Yep. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Young Kawhi. <laughs> You know, Paul, Paul George, Charles Barkley, those were my, uh, like, icons growing up. That's Those were my playing styles, you know. I'm in there battling, bro. Uh, and then we got a couple of shows for on Sunday because city men and women play on the same day. Luckily, they're hours apart. They're not on top of each other uh, and make it 
difficult and stressful and we're like hey let's do a watch along this is a bad idea it will also be stressed for five hours straight we are never doing that shit again <laughs> based based no, off of the results right. we are never right. doing that shit again <laughs> we've it's happened we've learned we move <laughs> um so today we're going to talk about it's the 98th episode so you know 1999 we're going to talk about the favorite episodes of that and then chicago and there are a couple of games that manchester city played last week we'll talk about grand scheme things i don't really care about the like real madrid it happened we move uh and then obviously i do kind of want to talk about a co- uh, the match coming up <clears throat> what everything means so yeah i think it's going to be more philosophical than it is like by the numbers, I was, <laughs> I was about I was about to say something, and I don't want it. it some people could take it as a diss because people are taking everything as they just got this like Drake Kendrick energy around here. They're making things weird, so I'm just gonna keep my words to myself. Uh, let's get into favorite albums of 1998. Uh, who wants to go first? I feel like let's do Lando because I, I feel like I know what he's going to say. And just in case he picks mine, I, I'm going to have to figure out if I want to pivot or if I'm just going to double down. Hmm. There are a couple good options. 98 was a great year, especially living in New York. Second World Series at the time. Knicks thriving. Um, yeah, great time in 98. You would anticipate me to go with a New York rapper. I would. I wanted to go with who my personal goat is, but I decided not to. I wanted to pay homage to this particular person because I bought this album probably at least four or five times in my life, and I saw him in concert. Rest in peace. Oh. But I decided to go ahead and go with my uh, ethnicity. Decided to go with my background. Big Pun's Capital Punishment dropped in 1998. Um, An absolute banger of an album. I feel like it's a staple or one of the staples early on for Latinos to kind of get out there and kind of show how much they were in the shits in New York, especially living in New York, just understanding just the overall culture and the diversity of it all and just seeing it out there for it to kind of hit more mainstream with Big Pun. I felt like I just, I had an ally and kind of where I was growing up from the Bronx. I grew up in Queens. So, um, but yeah, capital punishment, uh, Big pun. Okay, so that wasn't my pick, so I'm good. But yeah. <laughs> Can I go? Yeah. All right. Of course. So everyone here who's known and listened to me knows I love Jay Z. He is my favorite rapper. Rapper. He is the goat. Um, Sean Corey Carter, Brooklyn Zone, Goat. Marcy Projects. 1998 gave us uh, Volume Two, uh, one of the most classic albums ever um it, it was a hard night of life but that is not my pick i'm actually gonna break the rules just like crunk and say quadruple to mean what he wants it to mean i'm going to say the rapper who had the best 1998 was one dmx oh without a without without question dmx released two number one albums Seven months apart. Durr. May 19th, 1998, he gave us It's Dark mm-hmm. and Hell is Hot. Uh, December 22nd, as a Christmas present, <laughs> he gave us Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood. And I was listening to this man between the ages of seven and eight nonstop. Um, I not own the CDs personally, but the singles, you couldn't get enough of Rough Riders Anthem. I wanted to be a Rough Rider. I wanted the Pit Bulls. Oh I wanted gosh. the Bikes. I wanted the four wheelers. I, oh, I wanted I was, the four wheeler. We had groups in oh school. You were either are you either riders? You were uh, what was the the group from these Rock, Rockefeller or you were you know whatever. I was always yeah, a rock uh, Yeah, you know, like that. That was my guy. So DMX's 1998 was Jeff's kiss. That's fine. That's great. Uh, I'm also going to break the rules and not just give one because, because, <laughs> um, because three of like, there were just three albums to me that are just so 1998. Um, Charlie already mentioned one of them with uh, volume two, a hard knock mm-hmm. life. Uh, I'm also going to go 
with um, Buster Rhymes extinction level event. Um, you could like, I like, I will still turn up and go wild to hear him and mysticals like his flip mode and the no limit, no limit in the flip mode. I just bonkers, just bonkers. Uh, and then the last one is probably arguably the best piece of art from 1998. Um, and it is the miseducation of Lauren Hill. I, it's Banger. like just it, it's mm-hmm. it's so good it's it's still it stands the test of time like all those songs are still good it is uh well i was gonna say the miseducation of lauren hill thinking that nobody was gonna call it out i should have known <laughs> Should have known Tom was going to get it. Uh, but I think one of these times we did one of these, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a church boy too. So I'm going to give Kirk Franklin his props with the New Nation hey. Project. Hey. So, yes. And New Nation Project. So mm-hmm. I'll give both of them a shout out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> woo, woo. Uh, it's funny because uh, my, <clears throat> what my first was hard knock life it's because that was when he really did do his crossover because he had hard knock life and he was like on trl like well not on trl but yeah he was just the 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 crossover was there the hit single Uh, for that album was for a movie like i know to your exact point like it was all for a movie Uh, i was and i was all in for rockefeller i was watching all the all of the all of their movies, how terrible they were. Lay down or stay down. <laughs> like I was about that light. Um, I even had a, a rock aware button up that I wore all the time, and it had lyrics of "It's a Hard Knock Life" on it. It was like this like tan one. It, I wore it entirely way too much. But uh, DMX, he did do his thing that year. Uh, and then my Southerners, I got to give some love to them. Outcast, Equimini. Juvenile, 400 degrees, just like absolute wow. Um, I don't know. All you guys kind of took mine, so I guess I'll 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 I'll, I'll say the one that people didn't say. I'll go with 400 degrees, bro. Yeah. That was that was good. That was lit. Like I still to this day, there depending circumstances. Chaser, you got uh, your black yeah. on fire. Remain in the G. Until yeah, home it, if you if you want to scare some gringos, that is uh, <laughs> an album. That's, that's real. <laughs> also, all these albums so to that which is crazy. Like that is very wild. Man. Yeah, like, whoa. Some some OLIs outside looking in that didn't make it. Most deaf and Talib Tal- Tal- Kweli, Black Star. Facts. Moment of Truth, Gangst, uh, Gangstar, that yeah. album hits. There were a lot of albums. Um, crazy. if we expand past, oh, RZA, Bobby Digital, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah, there's plenty. But let's get into Chicago. So, because you know, <clears throat> Chicago, it was a great time. Lando and I got there. Nice and early on Thursday, got acclimated to the area, got to the Airbnb. It was uh, moments before the lit stream. It was raining and our lock didn't work. <laughs> it was like a smart lock. And yeah, it was just not great. We're standing in there. I tried it a couple times. I felt embarrassed because, you know, we're just meeting for the first time and I can't control it. Like, I don't know how to work a smart lock. Like, what is this? What's going on? I'm like, I'm supposed to have it at least. Uh, in the first 15 minutes up here that I have, you know, going on like mentally. Right. So, uh, Lando, he tried, didn't work. Anyway, we got situated. We got in, we scrambled. Show went great. Fantastic. Shout out to our guests. Um, and then we traveled the area looking for food. Um, we found out very quickly, uh, in this part of Chicago, Lando was more effective than I would be. <laughs> that was... <laughs> uh, 
what do you mean by a am I wrong? Uh, you were walking around speaking Spanish to everybody who was speaking Spanish. Like, I, I don't think I said really anything. Like, the, uh, when we ended up getting tamales, I, I think I said, like, three. <laughs> uh, can I get two uh, red pork tamales? And can I get one jalapeno and cheese tamale? You couldn't That's have even said, said uno, dos, anybody. tres? Bro, they would be like, nah, you pander. Get out of here, you little pander. <laughs> I ain't doing that. I just say gracias, though. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, you know. That would be more pandering than the one, two, or the three. <laughs> hey, is it? Is it? You know, we go, like going back and forth to the Spanglish, like the dose of red pork and uno jalapeno yeah. and cheese. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, and that shout out to them. That was great. We had some, uh, we went all in. I mean, it was, it was a Mexican uh, grocery store. We tried to get some food. Also, that's perfectly okay with me. The first place, whenever I go to a new city, the three things I look up, coffee, beer, tacos. And that's not a joke. Those are the first three things I look up. So I, we could not have ended up in a, kind of like a, a better spot. And, and yeah, we just watched uh, bad movies and talked and just laughed. It was way too late. Smashed a 12 pack. It was great. Felt like a beast. And then woke up and got to it in the morning. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the places we went. We did a little roaming. Uh, wait until the to the, the homie wait, showed up. Wait, wait. Since, since no one was there to witness this, like, and um, what what were your like? What were your initial reactions meeting each other? Like, did it confirm biases? Um, did it? Lando, you did, go first. Well, I don't want to downplay the fact that Charlie has made it to seem like we are all um, living amongst crunk. But I mean, I played at a small D1 school. Crunk size is very comfortable with me. I, he had mentioned before that he was 6'4". So when I met him, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is my, my fellow guard. <laughs> I, 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 I vibed with it. Now, obviously, you guys know I'm on the shorter side, but I mean, and that, that it was it was comforting and knowing that I got a chance to finally see the boy that I've actually just been seeing across on the screen. Um, the in the interaction and meeting with each other was actually very New Yorkish because he went out of his way to pick me up. We were still trying to coincide where I was coming off the flight. He just kept dri- like a, like a proper New Yorker would just kept driving around the airport. Cause you're not going to stay posted anywhere to get the, t- get the toll or ticket or whatever. And so he just kept moving. And it was like one of those situations where I came out, I called, he answered, but like he was talking through the phone. It was really weird. Or like, through the car, I couldn't really hear it, but he, when he told me what he was driving, he had literally just drove by, just right by me. And so I was just like, yo, yo, stop right there where you are. I was like, put your, put your brakes. I think you just drove by. So he did. I was like, oh, perfect. This is New York. So I'm running to catch up to the car. And yeah, that, that's kind of how we met. And then our first experience was just driving to the dispensary, right, Krunk? Um, had to take care of business, right? First time. I've never gone to Chicago or Illinois dispensary is what I should say. Really, really weird interaction. Really, really weird interaction. Uh, everything felt sketch. It felt like they wanted, like, I, I have felt more comfortable with my neighborhood dope man. Um, the process, he was double checking everything with the costs. Um, Wanted to make sure I got some goodies for the boys, which per- lasted perfectly, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Like, amazing, the whole trip. So, shout out to that dispenser. I wish I remember it, but that was fun. Um, but, yeah, overall, it was a great night with Krunk. Got a chance to kind of hang out with him, talked about a few different things. The J. Cole, absolute what the fuck is going on with you? Touched on that. Um, uh, an age of music video. I think at one point we were coming across some music videos on YouTube and Crunk was just pretty much going through a couple of them that were dope. Uh, yeah, it was it was fun. It was really fun. Happy to see that we were able to get to the list stream with just enough time. And then from there, it's kind of figure everything yep. else out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Lando. Lando is who, who you think he is. And that's great. Like, because you, when you meet people for the first time, you, you never know. And uh, 
honestly, we because Tom, I'm Sharpie, Tarek, we've been doing this a little bit longer. I felt like I, mean, I kind of knew what to expect from you guys. Um, it was just other than that. But with Lando, he's he's newish still. You, you don't know. And nah, it was like he said, it was a dap up. You could tell he he's handled uh, talking <laughs> before. You know, he's just like, what's up? Like, the, the, you know, the handshake, the body was, was solid. He's bang. Like, came in and yeah, <laughs> just chopped it up and got to know each other. You know, talk, talked about actual like personal things that you don't normally do on. Uh, potting i i was it was nice that we were able to kind of have those moments mm -hmm. with it i was able to have those moments with yeah. each of you because that's kind of what i really wanted to do is like at least have a moment where we're being real and we're not just like constantly talking football uh which uh i mean we'll get to it but legit my one of my favorite moments actually we'll get to it now who cares we'll just bounce around one of my favorite moments was when we were heading to aj hudson and we <laughs> We're in that freaking 1998 Dodge Caravan. <laughs> so I try not, I'm going to stop right here. I try not to be classes and elitist, but I'm a very bougie person. Like, I have worked my way. <laughs> you should not be using that car for Uber. That is no, not an Uber. I don't know that how to get past, and I don't car. ever try to knock a black man's hustle, so I gave it five stars and kept it moving. What's the point? But, of course, bro, this man course. clearly got at least four kids. Like, um, that car has been to numerous McDonald's, it's been to Walmart, it's been to Target, it's been to the neighborhood store. It might have been on a drive-by. I don't know. The car did not look like an Uber standard for XL. I've never got – I've gotten minivans, but I've never gotten that minivan. And I'm just sitting there the whole time, right. like, trying to hold my nose, like, just like, Perfect. I don't know – what I did to deserve this. It was, it was warm in there, but he wouldn't. He didn't have the air things. on. I don't, I don't think the windows could come down. I didn't want to say anything or ask. Like it was, it was like because you know you want to ask, but if you get the wrong answer, like how do you then react to that? It's like mm, nope. Let's just sit here and relax and get through Bro. this drive. And luckily, we were all synced. We were on the mm -hmm. same page. Like, hey, let's just make the best of this. Let's talk about football. Like, it, you could, it, uh, Lando said it. He's like, we should be recording this. This could have been an episode. It could have been an episode. We were cooking because we had to. We were pressure. We were coal, literally cooking and being pressurized. And we became, it became a diamond yep. of a moment. So in my high ass in the back of the seat, the moment I sat down, I started bumping in my head, rock the mic by Freeway and Beanie <laughs> Siegel. Because as I quote, Fuck Alex, cause the click fit good in the caravan. Slide through your hood like an avalanche. When we were in that bitch, I was like, oh, we're young in here. But that was just the highest. It, it wasn't my certain standard. Very like grimy. It was very No, Charlie, ta bro, this man has put <laughs> He said it's been through hella McDonald's. <laughs> so many I mean, nuggets so have been eaten in that car. I mean, I'm fairly certain that when I are y'all sure y'all didn't get in the uh, the oh I almost gonna say the sex trafficker kidnap you van <laughs> kidnap you van and I mean I mean like you said this don't sound like this should be on on a uh, on a Uber no, or a Lyft if I if we bro like it it did you check the license sketch. plate <laughs> there was a it's, license plate I checked all I know all I know is that yeah. when I got in. I kicked at least three Happy Meal toys to get in. <laughs> like, that's like, I was like, oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Bro, oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, shout out to Turner House Brewery. Uh, that's where. We that was our first Friday stop, afternoon, really, yeah. when we met up, right? Oh, no, the first stop yeah. was Simone's. No, and we met up with the uh, with oh, Kate and Amy. Yes, oh, hey. was, uh, yeah, shout out to the Demolions. Very dope time, yes. Um, oh man, yeah, we we, Shoot. we had a time um, there. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was, Friday, that was quite, the, um, quite the start. We did, we had yeah. a ball. <laughs> quite the start, and then yeah. had a great time shout meeting out. them. Yeah. I hadn't seen them in a while, y'all met them for the first time. Um, two amazing city fans, two amazing yes. people, uh, and just chopped it up. Had a bunch of beer. Yes. I think I had some wings because I was hungry, and wings were my go-to all weekend. Um, and the bar was cool. Did Bill and Moose there too? 
Was Billy with no, him? No, Billy had Billy? bought them yet. No, no not, that wasn't. Yeah, but shout out to Alex okay. Castro, yeah. the homie. Um, he recommended it to me in his amazing list. Like, when yes. I go to Chicago now, that is the list I will use. Um, and I was like, oh, it's open. It's not just kind of, mm-hmm. you know, neutral or in between both of us. And I was like, okay, let's do it, y'all. And they like, bet, because they have somewhere to be later. So it all worked out. And um, I would definitely go back to Sipnos. Couldn't recommend it highly enough. Yeah. I would like to tell a story about Castro when we talk about game day. But, Charlie, I have to remind you of this funny-ass moment. I, it was – Game day morning, you were sitting on the couch. Charlie or me, Tom, and Crunk decided oh. to go smoke. <laughs> yes. Now this is why you did. T- t- you pick up where you whenever you're ready to talk about this story because this for me one thousand percent is the gold that we missed on getting recorded. To get our reactions all in different ways would have been absolutely. Absolutely! Oh hilarious. my God! <laughs> was it the? Was this the Barca match? The, no, 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 no. This, the, no. this is the Prem match. Nope. Oh, um, yes. Yep, he's right. hit. Was it? I'm trying to remember the goal. Burnley. I think it was yeah, Burnley. It was oh, Burnley. Burnley. It was the only thing yeah, on. Burnley. Um, but yeah, like I was just like everybody came in like, wait, they scored again, and they scored. Oh my God! Like back to back, like domino effect. It was just so perfect time. And I was like. Yo, and again, I'm not sober. I'm very high at this moment because he gave me to Eddie, and I'm just like, this is crazy. <laughs> like it was a beautiful 420 moment to start the day off. Uh, yeah, the funniest was Tom's reaction last because I walk in and Crunk, like I say it, and Crunk looks to me and was just like, I literally just said that, and I was just like, huh, that's funny. And then, but seconds later, Tom walks in and was just like, damn, they scored again. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god moments blades. moments uh the blades you know blades are going down it's, it is what it is and burn is um, kicking yeah so um i met the fellas at the airbnb um and i, I texted those like hey i think i'm here and then this mammoth human being who then introduces himself as crunk chocolate uh <laughs> comes down the stairs and lets me in i was like good grief and because I, I was thinking it's like wow, you're really tall. And that was like literally the first thing he said to me. He was like, you're so much taller than I thought you would be. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm coming through with my, with my suitcase and Lando takes that out of my hand. It was like, no, 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 come on, come on. Come on in here, get in here, get you some, like all of a sudden there was deep dish pizza. Um, there, was, <laughs> there was a beer. There was a joint. There was an edible. I was like, these are true friends right here. These, like, I, just, uh, um, yeah, I was not, I don't know why I wasn't expecting Crunk to be this tall as he was, but, like, it, 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 took, it took me b- back a little bit. Um, I knew that, I knew Lando was going to have a lot of energy and, it was like, just, and because he's from New York, he's, he likes to talk. And, like, I was down with that, too. Um, I knew Charlie was going to, like, May give me things to think about that I was just like, huh, like, and then have like information to back it up with. It was like, yes, that is exactly right. Um, so I, like, I just came in and was like, I felt right at home. It was like, this is great. Like, this is like we're recording an episode, but like in real life, it was fantastic. Let's, let's get to Tarek because Tarek was the oh, last man. to come oh, through. Man. So, what was your first right. impression, Tarek? All right. Let, let the people know when you came in and you know what your what your thoughts were. Uh yeah, I mean, I think I'm gonna go the other way. I knew Crunk was gonna be tall. I kind of had a sense that Tom was gonna be tall, and you and I had already met, Sharpie. So I think the thing that I was and this is I'm I don't mean to be whatever, but I was surprised that Lando, I thought I was gonna be the shortest person there. I, I really did. So to be actually <laughs> taller than Lando, uh, even if it's not by much, uh, I'll take my <laughs> all of my five nine and three quarters every single day. Uh, I was say but I'm five eight. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that was. I was like, oh, he's actually shorter than I thought. But everybody else, you know, like, like you said, the vibes were what you expected. Um, everybody was, you know, very much welcoming and and it was it was it, i guess it was what i expected because we we've already built this online mm-hmm. i guess there was a maybe there was a question is it going to translate to in person but um it absolutely mm-hmm. did it was it was great 
Um, so yeah, I did. Th- it was an awesome time. I did think that it was funny that like, like you went to go dap up Crunk, dap up Lando, dap me up, and then Charlie goes like, "Hey, long time no see since y'all have actually like <laughs> all yeah. the ones that have met each other." Like, oh, good to see you right. again, man. <laughs> yeah. Like we just I had to do it. Right. I yeah. mean, in the scam, right. in comparison, it was the shortest amount of time anybody had gone between seeing any people. But now that's true. We got two months, and then four of us I'm gonna miss you. Um. But yeah. you know, like it, that that camaraderie, that brotherhood, like even just from AJ Hudson on, right? Because like the game day experience, so I think we can talk about that. When we get to AJ, we meet Terry. He comes there, and it's just kind of like, oh wow, that's cool. But then we see all the people, right? So you got the whole, you got Jake, yes. the whole his crew um, for the the calm game. God bless him. Um, and then, you know, they just stay. The whole city, the whole bar turns into a city bar, which is dope to see. Like every TV was on FA Cup. I think maybe one wasn't. Um, and so yeah. it was just like, oh. And then I think, Lando, you wanted to say something about Alex on game day? So it's this is going to be a moment for me. And I got to be honest, I got to sit back and reflect on it because this is, we talk about ethnicity, we talk about culture, we talk about people. Uh, this hit my mother. So you have no idea how happy my mother was for me to link up with Castro. Castro's Cotracho. Castro is from Honduras, which is where my mother is from. And he put me on the spot. He asked me where I was from and everything. I pretty, I, that's my mother's. I, like when, when I went back to the island to, to visit her there or back to the, to, to the Honduras, to the mainland, we landed in Managua, which is the capital. And then from there, it's just like, I didn't know where I was going. So like, I can't speak intelligently to it. But my mother for us to see, not only just a fellow Honduran. That's wild. That's like, I can assure you that is wild. It's a small ass country in Central America, like wild for me to meet a fellow Honduran, but then a fellow city fan that is Honduran. That is for me, this is what this podcast and this is what this family and everything's about. I am so we we could have started this part and been like Crunk is tall and Orlando short. That's like I am very comfortable with who I am and what I what I've done and all that. But what makes me the happiest is to know I can do this with you all, have those moments, but make a connection with someone that other without you all, without what you all have done, and now that I'm coming into. I would have never had a chance to make my mother so happy and so proud for that. So for that a million times, I say thank you. And it's nothing but love. Like it's just, it, it truly made her day. It made her a year because she's been going through so much with lupus and other things. And it's just mm-hmm. for her to have that, to see that it hit her. It's like such a proud mother. She wanted me to like give, get, his numbers so that they can talk and make sure that he had everything like mom that's another grown-ass man with kids like he lives two blocks down from the bar like chill out like we're good like, he's not he's not a homeless Honduran that you need to just help out all of a sudden but she was just so proud of that so again a million times thank you thank you it's been so fun to be with you all just to I, I feel like we should never stop and, and reflect on these things because it's because of this wonderful club and the wonderful things that we all love and appreciate together that brings all the different cultures and that diversity together. So for that, a million times I say thank you, man. Yeah, yeah I just want to thank you to that. Castro. Yeah, for sure. I, just yeah, the, cool. all of the people that came out. That was the. I think that was the thing that really struck me the most. Um, a million percent. Meeting up with you guys that was expected because you know again we do this every week multiple times a week have been for two plus years in some cases. So that was a given. But when you think about all of the people and I won't call names because it's just, I will, I'll miss somebody and then I, I don't want to do mm-hmm. that. But to, for people to come from as far away as California, get on planes, buy plane tickets, you know, just to kick it with us and hang out. That's cr- it's crazy. It's mind blowing. And it, it just, it speaks to the, community that we've been able to build um and it is you know second to none and i'm just glad to be a part of it y'all do realize that we had people literally come from coast to coast to chicago to hang come hang out with us like natty 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 they're from chicago they're from new york then we had uh that huge uh hollywood mcfc contingent that came shout out to the damali sisters Mm -hmm. billy beck 
Uh, right, John Daniel. Stone, that's a great moment. Yeah. <laughs> Billy <laughs> back. Billy back. Billy back. Three to homie. Come through. Right? Yeah. Oh, sure. oh, man. That was so Oh, Meeting DT3. I mean, we'll go back to Billy R. John Stones. We'll give him this moment. But meeting DT3, and he is just as, like, giggly and bashful in person. I, like, I was just like, ah, oh, that's actually how he is. Daniel. And he was just like, Daniel, call me Daniel. My name is Daniel. Do not call me my social media moniker. And I was like, my bad, Daniel. My bad, Daniel. <laughs> but also DT3. Right. So when I called uh, Billy or John Stones, it's because if you all don't know, we're men of color and Billy's white. And so you think about Fenders, you know, I got a couple of Fenders and Billy's white and dude was hanging out with us. And so he came over, what was that, Saturday night? No, Friday night. Friday night. Friday night. Yeah. Friday night. Yeah. Deep. Friday, Friday, I actually ordered Harold's. Yeah. Crazy. Um, I actually ordered Harold's on DoorDash. I, I was going to get yeah. to that. So and, and, and it was like, and we were sitting there, and I think it came the next day or something, or maybe while we were there. I was just like, oh, wait, like, he's the white, he's the one. It had to be the next day at the game. I was like, wait, he are John Stones. Like, he's with the rest of us in the black line. And I was like, man, love you, bitch. <laughs> the guy. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I didn't want to cut off this discussion about Billy at all because great dude and yeah. appreciated him coming out. Uh, it was great to meet him. But I was going to, you know, when you think about like prototypical, well, not even say prototypical, but when you think about Chicago food, like being from North, what is that? Northwest Indiana originally. So kind of in that region, we know about Harold's, we know Lou Malnati's, uh, Giordano's, or whatever, but you got uh, Harold, you also had Lou Malnati's. So I just want to get your take on just the the food that you were able to eat. Um, that wasn't my first time. So like for me personally, like I've been to Chicago a few years ago. Okay, but the mm-hmm. sad thing is this one messed up my order because I really I ordered lemon pepper chicken mm-hmm. and yeah, there was did. no lemon. You yeah, you're right. I do remember that. There. Now yeah. the chicken itself, fried chicken was good, very good chicken, good yeah. fry. But I wanted that yeah. that suck that little taste that I couldn't get. But the chicken was great. I know you, uh, Crunk got some, right? And I think Billy got some. So Crunk, how was your hell's experience? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh no, it's good. I mean, I've like I said, I've had I. I mean, I didn't say I have had Harold's before as well. I mean, it's good. It honestly, it's not my favorite. I've, I've, I've had better chicken places, but also they've they've had to make some adjustments, some changes. Uh, but it was it was really good. Very tasty. Luminati's very solid. Uh, if we ever go back to Chicago, uh, I'm going to we're going to get Chicago style pizza from my preferred place. Uh, Luminati's is good. It's it's like it's like it's like sexy Chicago style pizza where the place where I go, it's more like rustic home style. Like it's hearty. Like you eat one slice and you're like, fuck. Uh, that like uh, that, to, that to, was, to Tarek's, that was, to like, Tarek's point, it, it is a, eat, truly eating a casserole. That's yeah. crunks. Yeah, no, no fact. Oh, that's, that's my point. Yeah. But it, but it is. But it is. Actually, like, I was going to say, I'm is... surprised you got it as opposed to getting the tavern style. Well, you know, Lando, he he was like, hey, I want to get some Luminati's. I personally have never had Luminati's. Also, because like I said, I. I, I go to Superosa's that, you know, I'm, I'm more like towny when it comes to Chicago stuff. Uh, so I wanted to try it and it was good and it's good ingredients and stuff like that. But uh, the prices at Superosa's, it's also better. You get more pizza, better price. Yeah, we, you know. we should have went with Kronk. There were two things about Luminati's. One, it was the closest to our Airbnb. Like on the way, yes. it was like perfect. Second, I'm telling you as a New Yorker. That second slice that I had, I picked it up and, and, and held it in my hand and ate it. The Chicago deep dish, that Chicago deep dish. <laughs> that ain't it. That ain't it. <clears throat> I'm sorry. If I could pick it up with one hand, it's, come on, what are we doing? Oh, you're going to have to try Super Rosa. Yeah. It's like, See, we're going with your great. place it's next gonna, time, Kronk. It's going to sit and you're going to be, you can, and that's what I love about it. You I can sh- use a fork or you can just like manhandle and eat it. And it's just like this, like, hefty delicious because it's it's like uh luminati's it's mostly cheese and a thin little bit of uh the tomato sauce where like super says it's like a nice crust and it's the cheese and it's the sauce like it and that's why i call it a casserole because it's just it's but it's the equal amount and i mean that's the chicago yeah. style that i feel like people know and 
but it, it was experience. You gotta have the Illuminati's. Uh, I also uh, we got to get to the cold though, because uh, Sharpie Charlie he was. Hold on, uh, there oh, wait, was a moment. wait, we we skipped breakfast. Oh. Can I just say, can I say one thing real quick? Also, please, gotta please, shout please, out Scarf Boy. Boy. Thank you, saved my life. Yes. I, was yes. I was gonna I do. Was gonna get back to Drove him. down multiple hours uh, from yes. I think Milwaukee area to come hang out yep. with us too. So Charlie, yeah. Scarf yeah, looked it up. He gave me a, a in my head. Um, I wouldn't have lasted that long at the tailgate without it. But Crone, you were setting it up, so we'll, we'll get back. Yeah. A thousand percent. Um, he came to me before he gave you that gift. And in drunken hiatus, he whispered to me, do you think that Charlie would be take it disrespectful would be mad if I dropped the ball joke before I handed him his gift. And he told me that he had a gift for you and it was a hat and everything. And I looked up at him like, you know, you're in a bar, so not like talking face to face to him. So like my head is ducked. I'm listening to what he said. And I look up at him. I was just like, I can't name you top five better men, five better bald <laughs> men than Charlie. It's I cannot do it. <laughs> and he, I was just like, other than MJ and the first time reason Jared Jack came up with this. <laughs> like I was on the spot, so I couldn't think of anybody. I was like, maybe Jared Jared Jack, but Charlie's on that top five. Go get it. He's fine. I appreciate that. Jared Jack's like, Jared Jack is song. crazy. I know. I know. I did. I couldn't think of any other any other bold men. I thought it was maybe Tyrese Seal. Tyrese and Seal. I don't think. No. Like, no. Charlie's. Charlie, no. Now you're just Charlie's naming way better. People. Charlie's way better than Tyrese. It's way better. I also didn't make signs of yeah, making it out there. Um, or how you gonna yeah, like that? That, yeah. That's, yeah, but that's you also though. didn't write that's on true, Instagram though. throw true. in the tile. So, I... hey, for every throw in the tile, he gives us a beautiful <laughs> Fast and Furious moment. So, you know, the man is, he's a man of multitudes. <laughs> he contains multitudes. He is. But back to cold. Chicago though, sucked right? for the weather on Saturday. The weather was <laughs> stupid. I left 60 plus all week on my spring break, living life in the DMV. It was glorious. What's a hoodie? I didn't know her. But I got in Chicago. Here's the outfit, y'all. I had on my tight hoodie with the jersey over it. Shouts to Riyadh. The big jersey over it. But I was like, no, I need to layer up with another hoodie over that because we're going out into this tundra of um, of late April. And I'm just confused. Downtown Chicago. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah let's man. take this walk. Crazy. The walk where? Why are we walking? This is not fun. So we get to <laughs> Poland. Like, oh, yeah, let's walk. The terror is so you know, wonderfully drives us. Um, over into the area close to Soldier Field. Chipotle is around the corner. Cool, cool, cool. And then it's like, yeah, let's go to Soldier Field. I'm looking at look, looks like I got this. Fourteen dollars, no problem, y'all. Let's. He's like, no, 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 sit the walk. We'll walk it off. Then Lando was like, no, yeah, we'll walk it off. And I was like, all right, Brett. And by the time we got out there, I was just like, I ain't even gonna be here too much longer. Like what Magic Johnson say? I don't know about the game tonight, but uh, I ain't gonna be there. <laughs> it was cold, bro. I didn't have gloves. <laughs> I left my scarf at the crib. I was like, this, the fire in it. If it was, you know, maybe the Red Star, the I would have gone and seen Val Swanson. Yeah, yeah. I won't go and see no security. Oh, Whatever bro. his name is. The I don't about to see that boy. He won't worth my time. <laughs> that 25 dollars gone. Me and Terry was like, something cost. It's over, bro. <laughs> Somebody was spending I saw money. It. I saw I, I saw I saw the look in both like I saw like y'all both had a moment, y'all looked at each other, and it was like, Yep, it's a wrap. Like like y'all was out y'all was out. I, I knew like I was like, Oh yeah, they leaving. They they they're definitely leaving. And I'm all just in my own. But see, Terry, you're like, the Midwesterner oh, by nature, by oh. core. You know, you grew up in Germany, you did all these cold weather places. But even for you, bro, it wasn't that great, was it? Uh. For me, it, it wasn't. wasn't the, it wasn't the weather that made me. I, I, I. So I think I told you guys I had to stop by my parents on my way in. Yes. And so, yeah. I kind of felt like I needed to go be with my family because yeah, yeah. got stuff going on. So I was like, I, actually, I need. To, but I wasn't gonna leave, even though I felt that way. I wasn't gonna leave because it was like you know everybody then came from out of town. I, I just need to be here and kick it with the fellas. But once you decided to leave, that kind of gave me the okay. I'm out too. And then I so rightfully I, played. Yeah, I just well went grabbed my clothes from my brother's house and then jumped to my parents and hung out the rest well, of the let's, time. So, well, yeah. well, let's skip ahead an hour okay. um, to us being inside of Soldier Field. And oh, first God. of all, like they do, the, like, oh, God. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I got to meet, I just want to say uh, shout out to the luchadors oh, yeah? I met. Yeah. 
Uh, that was the literally the best moment of my entire experience. Uh, we'll get to it. Uh, I do want to talk about the cold ass hot chocolate. Lando and I walked halfway <laughs> around Chicago Fire. They walked all the way around Soldier Field. Like it was, it was like not to find this. asking every booth. You got you got hot chocolate. You got hot chocolate. No, you got hot chocolate. And finally, we got to the. She's like, we got. And she like took her time, like put the lid on, put the plug on. We take that first wig, and it was w- lukewarm. Yeah, I was like, God damn it! And it was like ten bucks. It's like I, I want to turn around, and be like, woman, better at least put some alcohol in this. He's right. But I was like, nope. Let's just get back to the seat. We just like Sharpie said, we did all that walking. I was cold. I just chugged it all in. Wait, Clark, you were warm cold? Up. Oh my god! So shout. Bro, I wow. didn't say I was it. Shout out to Black Fires who got us tickets in the supporter section. Yes. We really appreciated that. Yes, um, yes. Pre pre match show, time. they're doing a the little pyrotechnics, and then I think I heard somebody say, "Yeah, like every time that they score a goal, you know, they shoot the fire up above the the goals." And I was like, "Oh, it's, that and fire it felt so, so good. great. It so, felt so good." So it I'm so I'm sitting good. next to the homie Natty, oh, and uh, they're saying like, "Okay." You know, I'm a Red Bulls fan. I know you're a sporting Kansas City fan, but we need to tra- cheer for some, uh, Chicago Fire so that we can both be warm. Like, they just need to score as many goals <laughs> as possible, right? 26th minute. 25th minute, excuse me. Uh, we all saw Lake Scars. 26th minute. Sh- Zerdan Shakiri subbed off. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. By the end of the half, it is 3-0. Uh, Real Salt Lake. I see Crunk and Lando turn around and look at me, and they, they have that look. And it's like, yep, we're going to go find Charlie. <laughs> and, and shout out to like Jake and Phil, like again, uh, the, the pre party. Uh, music, so many people that are just enchanting. There's music playing, there's food around, there's beer around, everyone's sharing. A guy offered us his Kringle pastries. I was like, if I have that, I'm going to want more of it. I just need to say no. It's so good. THC infused gelata sauce. Oh, that chamoy? Wow. Oh, yeah, no, it threw me off. Oh, that's right. They do call it chamoy. My bad. I forgot. Yeah. Shout out to you, Tom. But Look it, at you. But, like it, you but it goes in there. But it goes in there. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, it was... It was great. It was such a fun time. Um, shout out to Yvonne. Shout out, yeah, to to everybody that we hung out and spent time with. Uh, Jake gave us uh, at the on Saturday gave us a real dope cold yes. coin. That bitch is like yes. a fish. It's yes. heavy. Like it. Like when he handed it to me, I was like, right. "Oh, like, oh <laughs> whoa!" Nice. Mm-hmm. Still yeah. in my bag right now. And. And it, it's, yeah, it's in my, oh, yep. And that's where it's just gonna, always going to be. Uh, just the the care, the love that we received from everyone throughout the weekend. It was it was just fantastic. Um, side one, I know we're talking about everybody, but uh, Lando and I, we went and got breakfast. Shout out to Don Pepe. Uh, I can't wait to actually look at that. I recorded our, our breakfast. But uh, <laughs> at the end of it, this sweet lady comes up to us, and she was just like, "Are you guys TikTokers?" That's right. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, that food was so good, and I'm pretty sure they like hooked it up even more. I had entirely too much food. It was great. Um, and Lando, he he he's literally just like a, a just a simple dude. Is uh, chorizo y huevos. Some tortilla, you know, just like some beans. Uh, even though you know they didn't have black beans, that's the superior bean. Um, but he, he he may do with the refried bean. He may do with the refried bean. And uh, me and my extra ass, I got the chili uh, chilaquiles Don Pepe, and it came with all kinds of shit. It was great. It was fantastic. Super fresh. Um, the people we got the tamales from that was actually the recommendation. That was where he said go get breakfast from. In Spanish, so that's how you knew it was going to be good. And um, the oh, the Latin bakery, shout out to them. Oh, yep. uh, like truly, uh, shout out to you, Lando, because yeah, <laughs> one seeing how uh, joyful he was in there, like you could really tell that he felt 
because he, he he's like, okay, this is the process. You go over here where where all right, you get the tray, and you get the tongs, and you just pick the stuff out. And Bro. if I would have went in by myself, I would have just been standing there waiting for help. Except for I'm not sure if they would have been able to help me. We would they just would have been like pointing at the it was. The shit was so good, and I I personally have never had sweet breads like that before, and this was it was like one of the, the things that I want it, of of this weekend is for us to you know connect, get to know each other very well like that, <clears throat> and you know seeing you and picking them out and then us eating it with our coffee and stuff like that. It was, and then Tom Bob making the breakfast. It was just really cool, like us all. Uh, taking moments to uh, like put ourselves into the weekend. Honestly, I was talking about it before you came on, Tarek. Uh, you kind of talking about your parents and, you know, your parents kind of giving you a little stick about being in the show and low-key being a celebrity and all that stuff. Like seeing you beam because you are, you're, you're very kind of like calm. You're a dad, you know, you always got to be ready for stuff. So seeing you to like relax, laugh, uh be proud of like what we're doing uh to be fair it great. wasn't my parents saying it, it was me more oh, like sorry. it was more so me just like people really want to come hang out <laughs> with me want to come hang out with us like we've not even met but they want to come kick it with us and it's like that's crazy to me but yeah. like i said earlier it's it's just the the hey we've built this family we call it shady gang but we built this family and yes the five of us are in it but it really we've we've opened it up and other people feel that they are a part enough that they are willing to give up their time their money their treasure you know all of these things they're willing to sacrifice to come kick it with us and it's just like mind-blowing that people would actually care that much about what we do um but like i said we have this shared shared love for city um and then we've built this community and there's nothing like it and i don't know if you all remember this Kronk, i'm sure you do but you used to do the uh the circles of like connections to shady game like to shades of blue on the twitter account and it was just like yeah, mm -hmm. thinking back to those yeah. and now mm -hmm. how many faces i've met in person or even if it's like just from a break, a breaking bed, a breaking bread, or a lit stream, or whatever, like the interactions have gone beyond just typing to their face to face on some level at this point. And you know, like that's a very beautiful, special thing to be a part of. As you know, us being minorities and then obviously super minorities in this space, um, to be welcomed by so many different types of people from all over, all walks of life, um, however you want to put it, but like. like People they rock with us, and that's kind of this that people want to kick it with you, and you know, looking forward to the next time, and the next time, and the next time, because this won't be the first. I mean, it won't be the first, but it won't be the last, and that's really cool to think about for me. Also, I really have to um, thank you, fellas, for um, indulging me and letting me, letting me cook breakfast for y'all um, Saturday morning, mainly just because it like helped calm me the fuck down uh for the match which i probably like based off of what transpired in the match was probably the best thing for everybody involved <laughs> i know right that was scary was fundamentals scary. Uh, all about the fundamentals um the, yes back, back to, to basics oh. baby go back, back to basics back, back to, to basics. basics and yeah i i mean i kind of want to run with uh you know what Tarek and Tom Bomb were saying, uh, we're just so appreciative. It's one of those things that I'm going to get a little too real. People can kind of take us and are enjoying ourselves and us just simply trying to insert ourselves into a lane as machismo, as bravado, as like taking situations and what we have for granted and never not for one second have I not thought that this is absolutely amazing, wondrous, like Tarek said, like these people care what our thoughts, they want to fly hundreds of miles. They like uh, were waking up in the crack ass of dawn to make sure that they're going to leave to then also like get back in time to go to a angel city football match. Shout like, yeah. These are shout out to, to yeah. uh, the 
LA contingent that did that, like y'all are real ones. Like y'all, you know, just like A one fans, like, Tom. A one fans. Hey. You know when I had a real real last moment that I was like, and I, I was happy with it because he like called me out on it and I was like, Yeah, no, you're right. I am. I am sorry. Something about Kyle Walker during the game happened. And he looked over at me, at, he as an Castro, and said, you better apologize. And I was like, I'm sorry. I've been said I'm sorry. Like, yes, Charlie was right the whole yeah. time. Needed. And I love that. I love that. Don't I've give in to the pressure. <laughs> Don't give in to the pressure, my guy. No, nah, T, I, I love it. If I've always said, especially when I was coaching, if I stand on something and I'm wrong, come back and put it in my face. I'm a okay with it because if I have the gall to get out there on a lane and stick with it, I'm fine with being wrong. It's what I believe. Now, again, if I'm also just throwing like having fun, like I've joked with Kronk, the Eddie Howe situation, like if we're just having fun with it, it's a fun thing. Like I don't really give a shit. Give me shit. I don't care. But if I'm serious about a lane and I'm wrong, tip of the cap. You got me. But the fact that you call me out on it means you're listening. I love you. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. 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 Let's go. Oh, man. Um, I guess anything else before I guess we talk about football? Did we miss anything? Friday coffee shop. The vibe that we saw in that coffee shop, Krong. Yeah. You put out a great video. Get to our socials out there. Krunk did a great job of doing a, a great kind of brand awareness for this coffee place. The vibe couldn't have been more immaculate. If I lived in that area, I'd tell you right now, I would meet Krunk there at least once a week just because I felt that... I, it, I felt like if Crunk was my college teammate and we went to go do something away and that was like a place that he liked and his vibe, at least once a week, I would try to go there and do that with him again. Because like, I just felt I was around some cool ass people that was a little bit out of my comfort zone, more of Crunk's comfort zone. But I just, I embraced that out of shell awkwardness for me like i walked around and took a few videos of things i mean crunk can elaborate on you want but please get to our socials and, and get a chance to see this video that crunk did because it's really really great to kind of talk more about the about the coffee shop had such unique drinks it also had almost everything in the damn store was for sale L literally almost everything the plants shirts the the the, the stuff that was up on shelves like it was incredible such a cool concept i'm so happy crunk found it i thought it was a really cool experience i, I love doing shit like that so every city that we go to i'm relying on crunk next time to come up with some dope spots like that because without a guy like crunk i would not be able to ever walk into a cool world like that it was so unique the vibe was just like i would go there every day and i wouldn't have found it without crunk which is i think again so dope yeah uh he had a, a, torni a tortilla, a corn tortilla and oregano latte. It was like, that was crazy. My, uh, my, it was a cold brew, but it was like a passion fruit cold brew and had some citrus in it. It was great. Uh, Cristobal, uh, it's a flower, a flower store, coffee shop and retail clothing. Um, Cristobal, he's first generation Mexican American. They wanted to create a store and everything in it that represents his people. And so he's basically like, these drinks are basically what I'm drinking at home and what my friends and stuff are drinking at home. Obviously, these are like elevated versions of it. But yeah, no, it was. And whenever you can go to a place and you can get a sense of where they are from, but also it still feels like natural and that you're used to it. Like, I love that stuff. And yeah. people who are passionate, like if you bring me passion, just like Pep, you know, that the fire in the belly, like if I can sense that from somebody, I can listen to you talk about your stuff all day. Like, I, I don't care if I understand a third of what you're saying. Like, just let's, let's go, let's, back, let's go back and forth. Give me enough time, I will be with you. I'll learn. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was great. Cristobal and his wife, Cristobal's wife was a RN and Cristobal was a fashion designer. And this man is running a coffee shop. Like it was so unique. His story and his perspective, what he was trying to do, like 
again, I would have never met that human being without a guy like Crunk showing me this random cool ass coffee shop. Just some of yeah. the dopest shit we did. And Turner House Brewing, a black owned brewery. We went and we had our, uh, we did a flight each. Uh, had a good time. Great call by Charlie. Great call by Charlie to get that flight. Yeah, it was a good time. Um, 